So hi, good afternoon to all of you. So <laughs> yesterday class was, I had to end it abruptly, but hopefully today <laughs> we will compensate that, that what we didn't study yesterday. So I'm quite fine right now, and I took a little bit of time to draw this particular stupa structure. So yesterday we were in the middle of the stupa and then uh, something happened. So uh, I hope that you have already created this structure yesterday, but I tried with this digital kind of methods that if I can create one more structure. So I will again write those all things which were at this place. And yesterday also I wrote these all things, but without writing I cannot uh, further elaborate upon this one. So just give me a little bit of time so that I would elaborate upon this. And if you want, you can, yesterday you have created. So let me write it quickly, that what all things I have written yesterday. So this was the Vedika. This is Vedika, which is the boundary wall. This is Torana. Torana is basically the gateways of the stupa. This is structure I called Pradakshina Path. Pradakshina Path. Then this was Medhi. It will not take more of time. Just give me just one minute. This is Anda. Then these are relics of Buddha. Relics. Then this is structure we wrote Harmika. We wrote Harmika. Then this one is Yasti. Yasti. And these three were called as Chhatri. These three were called as Chhatri. And if any other structure is remaining, so all the things I have written, itna hi likha tha kal bhi, okay? So now, <laughs> initially there was no sound because I didn't, <laughs> Uh, turn it on. So I was just creating the image. So that's why. So these are the structures. And yesterday I did mention to you that what was the logic, that what was the, uh, how the stupa originated. And moreover, the in early nine stupas where uh, Asoka, what he did, that Asoka, he divided the relics of the Buddha into nine parts and these on these nine parts he created nine stupas which are the early stupas of the Buddhism. Then so early stupas of the Buddhism but here we need to write something else also. So when Asoka created these all early stupas and surprising was that some of the important places associated with the life of the uh, Buddha like Sarnath, there was no uh, early stupa at Sarnath, then Bodhgaya where he achieved Nirvana, he didn't create any stupa over there, he didn't create it even at Lumbini. So these all places were the most important places associated with the life of the Buddha, but there these stupas were not created. In fact, in the common culture and uh, the contemporary age, when we talk about the stupa, so generally the first stupa which comes to mind is the Sanchi stupa. So even in Sanchi he did not create it, that ugly stupa was not created or you can say that the stupa which had the remains of the Buddha, it was not created at Sanchi, it was not created at Sarnath, it was not created at uh, Lumbini, it was not created at Bodhgaya also. The only place where some sort of relevance of the Buddha's life was there, that was the Kushinagar. So Kushinagar, because he died at the Kushinagar, so obviously that when he is dividing the relics, so he is dividing it from the... Uh, the Kushinagar only. So that's the only place where it was there. Moreover, 
After completing the construction of these nine stupas, Asoka was of the view that uh, it must not be, that stupa construction must not be limited to the nine, more stupa must be created. And he went by the tenets of the Avadana Sutra. Avadana Sutra is a kind of a book or textual tradition in the Buddhism. Try to understand. So in the Avadan Sutra, what was written? It was written that anyone who constructs the stupa, okay? anyone who constructs the stupa, so he gets uh, that uh, he gets alleviation from many of the miseries of the life. Then, so many of the miseries in the life, and after that, following the uh, tenets in the Avadan Sutra, Asoka came up with a policy. He created a policy, and name of the policy was the calm and glad policy. What was this calm and glad policy? That he wanted to win the heart of the people, trust of the people, and not just one or two places, but many places. So going by uh, tenets of that, uh, this calm and glad policy of Asoka, he decided that he will construct n number of stupa. And as per many estimates, it was that it may seem a little bit exaggerated or a little bit hypocrite, not hypocrite, but a little bit exaggerated. Uh, so. Uh, it was said that he constructed near about 84,000 stupa. So though in the present day world we don't have the remnants of the 84,000 stupa, but obviously it can be said that Asoka constructed huge number of stupas, which was uh, nearly impossible for anyone or anybody to create in such a short span of time. Then, so we will talk about that the concepts which are involved in the stupa. Meanwhile, you write. So yesterday we have written few things and we have not written after those nine stupas, we didn't wrote anything. So next you mention that following, following the tenets of, and I'm writing this part here, following the tenets of Avadan Sutra, Avadan Sutra, Asoka decided, Asoka decided and I'm very thankful that you guys are concerned about my health. Yes, there was, that. I think that just in front of you only that there was one insect and which was hovering around and then <laughs> let me share this embarrassing thing with you guys. It entered into my shirt and then it cut at many places. So that's how I was in a little bit of pain and then uh, it was not easy. It was not becoming easy. And this is a one topic which I uh, seek your attention in the beginning. And without my own full devotion, I can would not have completed this topic. So thank you for asking. <laughs> so as per the tenets of Avdan Sutra, Avdan Sutra, Asoka decided, Asoka decided to construct, Asoka decided to construct large number of stupas. Asoka decided to construct large number of stupas. Then, full stop, then you write, Asoka decided to construct large number of stupas. He initiated a policy, he initiated a policy, calm and glad. He initiated a policy, calm and glad, He initiated the policy, calm and glad, whereby, whereby he wanted, he wanted, he wanted to win the heart, whereby he wanted to win the heart, to win the heart, and to win the heart, and bring peace to the large number of people win the heart and bring peace to the large number of people. Large number of people. Full stop. Then further you mention. As per some textual tradition, as per some textual tradition, textual tradition, as per some textual tradition, It was said that it was said that Asoka constructed
it was said that Ashoka constructed more than 84,000 stupas. More than 84,000 stupas. But what I said to you, that history has an element of exaggeration many a places. And there is a dramatization at many a places. So wherever the fact you are writing, okay, that fact is often that in this class also, since I am responsible for my classes, so fact which I am dictating to you, I am dictating it, it with a caution. That fact should be right. But wherever the dramatization, some kind of that story is there, see that entire story, nobody can claim that any such stories are entirely true. Because ancient and medieval has element of mystery also. Then, and not, in, not only ancient and medieval, but even in the modern histories, there are many such theories which circulate. Then, and these theories, we always write with the word of caution, maybe, perhaps. Then, so it is the word that we are using while writing that is very important. Then, which makes it that when you are writing those stories, those kind of things, so you always add perhaps, maybe, because you don't give an impression that uh, whatever that I am writing that is perfectly correct. Then it is the one problem with the history that you come across that one book will mention some, uh, some story, one other book will mention some other story. Then, so that's how the language is very important and you will learn over the period that how you would be writing in this particular uh, <laughs> subject. Then, so some places maybe and perhaps are the best word to use. So let's get back to this one. So what I was saying that he constructed 84,000 stupa, which is a little bit of exaggerated, but otherwise he constructed, yes, he constructed large number of stupas. And then I was saying to you that in the early stupa, which do have the remains of the Buddha, so there was no Sarnath, there was no Sanchi then, and there was no other place, but Asoka, what he did that later on, there was one scuffle of Asoka with his own wife, his favorite wife. And uh, this wife was the, her name was Sri Devi. She was originally from Sanchi area. So she uh, actually complained to Ash Asoka that uh, you have created so many stupas at different, different places. And these all places, most of these places were not at all associated with the uh, Asoka, uh, that Buddha's life. And then you did not create it one at your Sasural. Then, so Asoka had to repent this decision that if I was taking that remnants of Buddha must be de there at these all places. So then he felt the pang and then he assured the lady that no, no issues. I will create the biggest stupa at my Sasural and your Maika. So that's how the biggest stupa was get, uh, was created at the Sanchi. And in the second phase, he created stupa at these all places. So then he created uh, at Sarnath, then he created at all the other places. But the first nine stupas were not at these all places. So this is one part. Now we will discuss the tenets involved or those things involved in the stupa structure. Now, we are looking at these uh, that the, this is structure. So let's begin with the outside outside so you see that there are four gateways in the stupa then when we talk about the stupa so there are four gateways one in each direction you can see that one in east one in west and then north and south so in each direction there is a uh, uh, there is a gate now my question to you is that chalo response me bhejna tum log that why four gates? Why not he created just one gate or more than four gates? Then, so why in this phase? We are talking about the Morga phase. Why four gateways were created in the uh, stupa? And it is of some importance. Then it has some kind of relevance. Moreover, some of the tenets or some of the principles of the Buddhism are involved over here. So uh, please mention in the response screen that what is your take on this one? that why four gateways in the stupa. So there are four gateways in the stupa, then Vedika, then so Vedika is also, it's not like a plain boundary. So Dipansi has said uh, four directions. So plain boundary, but there are many illustrations on the Vedika, that is the boundary wall. So I'll talk about that, what are those illustrations. And in the stupa structure, as I said to you yesterday, that how you would be using the pages. So there is a one more relevance, comparison. Then, So let me see, noble thoughts come from all directions, access from all sides, let the idea flow from all sides, four direction, four ways of life, entry for all without any discrimination. So uh, it's good that you guys are... Uh, <laughs> I will not say correct or not, otherwise you will not send the replies. So, uh, but you are trying good. 
that what could be the possible reason. In fact, that four directions are basically important in the Hinduism also. That in Hinduism and then in Jainism also, all the Oriental religions, they do have the importance of the four direction. Symboling of Northwest, East, South. Anno, Badra, Karthvo, Yantu, Vishwata. No. Four is important in Vedic culture. Four stages, Siddharth, Mohan. So, four stages of Buddha's life. I will not say four stages, but yeah, somewhere you are closer to the right answer. Four different things about Buddha's life. Yes, not different things. You are also closer, Abhyuday, you are also closer to the answer. Four stages of life. It's not four stages, but somehow you guys are closer to the answer. Four gateways denotes God's presence of God. Okay, four stages of life, four directions, four yugas. Oh, that's new one. Four yugas. Yes, in Hinduism, four yugas. That's Satyug, Dwapar, Treta, and now we are in Kaliyug. So, but not in this one. So I have. So I Vastu Shastra Prashant has sent Subra. So Siddharth and then some uh, who all have sent near closer answer. Siddharth Abhyuday and. Uh, Okay, so Siddhartha and Abhyuday. Four stages of Asutosasen, enlightenment in early Buddhism, Theravad are four progressive stages. No, uh, no Asutos, you are closer to the answer, but not exactly same. Not four stages of enlightenment. Here they are not talking about the four stages of enlightenment. Four period of dip, uh, dip, transformation, karma, rebirth, moksha, nirvana. Okay, Subham, so that's the Karma, Rebirth, Moksha, Nirvana. Again closer. So let me come to the answer. Many of you have tried good. Devendra also, that Brahmacharya, Grihas, Vanaprastha, Sanyas. It's basically the Hindu principle. Then, But Hindu principle, but ha do have the synonymity in the Buddhism also. And four principles of his type, Buddha's teaching. Maybe. So now, I am uh, not looking at the response right now. I will tell you. These are the four important life stages of the Buddha's life. Then, so four important stages of the Buddha's life. Four important events which happened in the Buddha's life, which changed his personality, which formed his personality. That is the four events. Overall, listen this very carefully. Overall, we do say that there are five events in the Buddha's life which actually were very important. But Stupa presents the four one. Then the fours. So four important life events of Buddha which makes Buddha who he was. So let's talk one by one. So these all. So let me denote directions. So this would be this Torana. This would be the East Torana. Then, and this one, which is at the top, so it would be the North. Then, this would be the West Toran. And this one is the South Toran. South Toran. Now, I am also creating one more image then just for the illustration. But this image, if you want to create, you can create separately on the other page just for understanding if you want. If you don't want to create, that's also okay. The image which I have left, I would be creating on this side, which I said that 30% of the page. So, wo abhi nahi. Is side pe mat banana. if you want to create, so separately kahi pe bana sakte ho. So, let me get back to, I will, I'll be coming back to this one. So give me just a minute. Not the entire part of India I have created, but some part of India I have created. And these four important life events of Buddha, which are demonstrated over here in the stupa. So the first event. First event, let me write here, birth. 
then second most important event is the nirvana and see that these are the terms which we have not studied till this point of time as i said to you that iske baad wala jo chapter hoga since it is art and culture so religion and philosophy there i'll be explaining that in uh, meaning of the nirvana in its entirety then third important event was the dharma chakra parivartan dharma chakra parivartan and fourth important event of the buddha's life was mahaparinirvana mahaparinirvana so these are the four important life events of the buddha that one is the birth second is the nirvana third is dharma chakra parivartan and fourth is the mahaparinirvana now so i will write the places also that where these all things happened where the birth of buddha was there so birth place was lumbini birth place was lumbini nirvana buddha achieved at bodhgaya i will be rather slow in this topic because it involves the concepts then so please try to understand the concepts so lumbini bodhgaya then where dharma chakra parivartan basically what is the dharma chakra parivartan that the first ceremony of the buddha buddha after achieving nirvana he gave his first upades so first ceremony of buddha that is dharma chakra parivartan it happened at the place sarnath sarnath and then what is mahaparinirvana in buddhism the death after nirvana is called as the mahaparinirvana so death after achieving uh, achieving uh, that nirvana that is parinirvana but since it is buddha's death so it is called as the mahaparinirvana so basically it is the death of the buddha abhi ke liye itna hi samjho and this happened at happened at kushinagar and this is what is the district of the amit who is coordinating today's class and this place is what is the district of the amit and mine also so we two belong to this place only that's our my hometown so kushinagar so lumbini bodhgaya sarnath and kushinagar it's a buddhist place whenever you get your nirvana in upsc <laughs> after getting selection you must visit to my place kushinagar now there is Uh, one international airport is getting created with the all grace of the prime minister so that <laughs> after doing that please do pay a visit to my place it's a beautiful place and then you can do some sadhana also there at the place closer to the temple where buddha died which we call parinirvana temple that place where buddha that exact place where buddha left his body so then so these are the places this mahaparinirvana please uh, abhi questions mein indulge mat karo theek hai abhi bas jo bol raha hu samjho this is death bas itne tak samjho kyunki dekho yesterday i mentioned that until and unless buddhism topic is getting completed there would be a little bit of complexity so let the all topics get completed you will understand everything and then uh, Uh, try to maintain interconnection between the topics. For example, that what you are getting, uh, that going to study over here again, Buddhism may yad rakna usko or is topic ko revise karke rakna. So now let's look at these all places. Why I have created this map of India? What is the relevance of this one? I would be trying to that I will be locating these places on the map. Then, so let's write. Listen, that first place, Lumbini. Lumbini, I can quote over here. This place is the Lumbini. then from lumbini buddha is moving to the second place is bodhgaya where he has achieved nirvana so this place over here in bihar that is bodhgaya from bodhgaya buddha is moving to sarnath then sarnath that is dharma chakra parivartan so sarnath is varanasi so he will move to this direction he will move to this direction then and then finally buddha is moving to this place which is kushinagar then so which is kushinagar so uh when we have to that this is the cycle of the life of the buddha this is what is the cycle of the life of the buddha let me further broaden it so that you can see it so let me write the name of these all places also so i mean this is lumbini 
and the place which I created over here, Kushinagar, you create a little bit here. So Kushinagar, this is Kushinagar. Then this one, Bodh Gaya. And this is Sarnath. So these all places. Now, when I have to give the direction that ki ye jitne bhi likhe hai, kaun se direction mein hai? These all are in which direction? So let's talk about the direction. So when we go by the map, so the direction, first of all, the first place is Lumbini. The first place is Lumbini, but and Lumbini is on the that this place which is closer to Kushinagar. So it is on the eastern side of the eastern side of the Kushinagar. So east then Buddha from Lumbini moving to which direction? Going down, it meaning south. So Bodh Gaya is south direction. And then Sarnath is from Bodh Gaya. If you look into the India's map, so which direction Buddha is moving? Sarnath western direction then so this would be the west and finally from Sarnath he is going upwards so which direction he is moving north and north is the direction of the death in the oriental religions as you know that you must have come across many such rituals which happen in the family so accordingly that north is the direction of the death and when anybody is dying particularly in the Hindu society or even in this also, so Hindu society and even in Buddhism also, so everybody is buried in the north-south direction. Head would be in the north and then the uh, legs would be in the south, uh, cremated in this way. So this east, so Lumbini is the east direction, then Bodh Gaya is the south direction, Sarnath is the west direction and then Kushinagar is the north direction. Now, this I have written from a perspective now let's mention it in the the structure that we have created i hope you understood this part even if you have not created this image that's fine but it's my job to create this one now i would be uh, quoting this in this structure so now east torana these are the four important life stages of buddha so east torana what you will attribute over here east torana is synonymous to lumbini and birth synonymous to Lumbini and birth South Torana or South Gateway is synonymous to Nirvana and the place is Bodh Gaya place is Bodh Gaya then, then West Torad, this one, it is Sarnath, so Dharma Chakra Parivartan. I am not writing the full one. DCP I have written, not the District Commissioner of Police, but Dharma Chakra Parivartan, tum pura likh lena. Hai? So, Dharma Chakra Parivartan. I don't have space here. And the place was Sarnath. Sarnath. Then, the north one, as we have mentioned so this is the Kushinagar north and which event happened in this so the event was Mahapari Nirvana Mahapari Nirvana वैसे भी कल जितना time बचा था class में ये topic तो नहीं complete होता so Mahapari Nirvana I hope you understood that there is a logic. What is the logic? Each direction, according to the map of India, there is a logic that east is the Lumbini, that is the birth, it is symbolizing the birth of Buddha. South is symbolizing the Nirvana of Buddha at Bodh Gaya. West is symbolizing Dharma Chakra Parivartan or the first ceremony of the Buddha at Sarnath. And North is symbolizing the Mahapari Nirvana or the death of Buddha at Kushinagar. So these, this is the meaning involved over here. If you want to write, so lick bhi lo, lick te chalo saath saath mein, thik hai? So please mention. 
द फोर गेट वेज द फोर गेट वेज तोरणास द फोर गेट वेज और तोरणास सिंबलाइज 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 फोर इंपॉर्टेंट लाइफ स्टेजेस ऑफ बुद्धा फोर इंपॉर्टेंट लाइफ स्टेजेस ऑफ बुद्धा फोर इंपॉर्टेंट लाइफ स्टेजेस ऑफ बुद्धा देन फर्दर यू मैंशन फोर इंपॉर्टेंट लाइफ स्टेजेस ऑफ बुद्धा फुल स्टॉप ईस्ट तोरण सिंबलाइजेस ईस्ट तोरण सिंबलाइजेस बर्थ एट लुम्बिनी ईस्ट तोरण सिंबलाइजेस बर्थ एट लुम्बिनी साउथ तोरण सिंबलाइजेस निर्वाणा एट बोध गया साउथ तोरण सिंबलाइजेस निर्वाणा एट बोध गया निर्वाणा एट बोध गया वेस्ट सिंबलाइजेस वेस्ट सिंबलाइजेस वेस्ट सिंबलाइजेस धर्म चक्र परिवर्तन वेस्ट सिंबलाइजेस धर्म चक्र परिवर्तन एट सारनाथ धर्म चक्र परिवर्तन एट सारनाथ एंड नॉर्थ सिंबलाइजेस महापरिनिर्वाणा महापरिनिर्वाणा एट कुशीनगर महापरिनिर्वाणा एट कुशीनगर देन सो दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द गेट वेज देन नाउ लिसन सो आफ्टर द गेट वेज द नेक्स्ट फीचर दैट वी सी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज दिस वेदिका सो वेदिका सो लिसन दैट वेदिका इज द बाउंड्री वॉल ऑफ द स्तूपा and this vedika of the stupa it is not a plain stu a plain boundary wall but it has many illustrations and what are these illustrations so in fact that in this boundaries of the stupas or vedika the uh, that folk narratives folk narratives associated with buddha's life or in pali what it is called as jatak katha so jatak katha associated with the buddha's life they are illustrated on the vedikas then so folk narratives or jatak kathas they are illustrated on the vedikas so you write that the boundary wall of stupa vedika the boundary wall of stupa vedika was full with illustrations was full with illustrations was full with illustrations that is folk narratives folk narratives or jatak katha jatak katha folk narratives or jatak katha associated with associated with associated with previous life story of buddha associated with previous life story of buddha previous life story of buddha and also and also the entire life cycle of buddha and also the entire life cycle of buddha so it means that the entire story is engraved on the vedika then so entire story is engraved on the vedika i just wanted to know here that anybody from the particularly in this class that anybody from the chikmagalur area of the karnataka or basically hasan chikmagalur mangalore or uh, even bangalore if anybody is there so you can send a response in the response screen so 
now so this is one one such thing i hope till this point of time you have understood these all now so let's get to the this particular part that is pradakshina path so first listen ye bahar wala part complete ho gaya so this stupa structure which is medhi it is a that kind of a closed structure closed structure once it is created so in this medhi structure nobody can enter then so nobody can enter so this is where that okay nobody is there prashant working there no somebody who is the habit that who is the resident of that place any of these places so <laughs> chalo koi nahi i will tell you that for what instance i was asking but there are some temples over there which do have something striking similarity with this one that this concept of the illustration on the gateways then so striking similarities are there i studied from manipal near mangalore so harshwardhan have you been to uh, halibid uh that hoyseleshwar temple or any of the chandakesava temple hoyseleshwar temple then halibid area or even have you been to that uh shringeri sharada peetham these all places so if anybody have been to any of these places particularly halibid then so at halibid there are temples where you will find that just like the way that in stupa entire life story of the buddha is engraved there also that hoyseleshwar is the vishnu tem uh, sorry that uh, lord shiva's temple and in this temple entire ramayana and mahabharata is illustrated on the walls of the temple and then the boundary walls then so that is one such similarity in the oriental religions that we do engrave the life stories either on the walls of the temples or on the uh, walls of the uh, that uh, the boundary walls then so this is one similarity but here you understand okay you have been to hampi no hampi it is not there hampi mein to aisa nahi hai but it is in halibid so uh, let's uh, what i was talking about so this production apart listen so i was saying that this medhi structure is a closed structure once what they do that once they have kept the relics of the buddha and this relic of the buddha is covered with the uh, unburnt brick so ye jo yellow part hai na this is unburnt brick so it is covered with the unburnt brick and then this structure is closed so nobody can enter inside this one so the process in the buddhism is that you can worship this place that this medhi on this open pathway which is known as the pradakshina path pradakshina path or ambulatory passage way so that is the importance of this one then uh the, this is the structure but some other important things this harmika so this harmika is considered as the most sacred space in the buddhism most sacred space in the buddhism and uh, it is always in line with let me create this one uh just give me a minute so when i create a line with this part so harmika is always created in line with the relics of the buddha so this is the sacred space of the this overall the most sacred space of the stupa so most sacred space of the stupa so harmika symbolizes the most sacred space of the stupa then this yasti which is there try to understand yasti in stupa structure is considered as the axis of the earth then it is considered as the axis of the earth and moreover these three chhatris they do have the very important uh, symbolism over here in the stupa these three chhatris they symbolizes three three ratna or three jewels of the buddhism so what is this three ratna buddha dhamma sangha i will write it separately so not on this side still one image is to be created on this side i am taking one more image creating one more image for the time being and you also create this image so you can create this chhatri structure and top pe likhna tri ratna of buddhism tri ratna of buddhism the very first one is the buddha first disc is the buddha second is the dhamma and third is the sangha so buddha dhamma sangha
meaning of these were all words buddh yahan pe likhna awakened one awakened one dhamma doctrine of buddhism doctrine of buddhism let me just 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 let me write it doctrine of buddhism fir uske baad then i will separately write sangha also and then this part what i said this was sangha so sangha is the order of buddhism order of buddhism so buddha awakened one dhamma doctrine of buddhism and sangha order of buddhism please create this structure which is the three ratna of the buddhism the writing part we will do later on so i hope you have written ab likh lo thoda sa pradakshina path next you write pradakshina path path is a open is an open pradakshina path is an open ambulatory passageway और सर्कुलर पैथवे लिख लो ज्यादा इजी रहेगा एम्बुलेटरी पैसेज वे आई विल यूज इन द टेम्पल सो इज एन ओपन सर्कुलर पैथवे इज एन ओपन सर्कुलर पैथवे पैथवे अराउंड मेधी अराउंड मेधी अराउंड मेधी for accessing for accessing around medhi for accessing the sacred structure for accessing the sacred structure and worship for accessing the sacred structure and worship yes it's parikrama in hinduism we call it parikrama path then same hai hinduism or buddhism mein buddhism mein you call pradakshina path and hinduism you call parikrama path so accessing the sacred space and then worship full stop then medhi and anda is a closed structure medhi after full stop medhi and anda is a closed structure which contains which contains the relics of buddha which contains the relics of buddha which contains the relics of buddha full stop then further you mention which contains relics of buddha harmika harmika is considered as harmika is considered as the most sacred space harmika is considered as the most sacred space most sacred space in stupa in stupa which is created in line with most sacred space in stupa which is created in line with in line with 
रिलिक्स ऑफ बुद्धा इन लाइन विथ रिलिक्स ऑफ बुद्धा देन देन फर्दर यू मैंशन इन लाइन विथ रिलिक्स ऑफ बुद्धा देन यस्ती इन बुद्धिज्म यस्ती इन बुद्धिज्म यस्ती इन बुद्धिज्म वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज यस्ती इन बुद्धिज्म वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज कंसिडर्ड एज एक्सेस ऑफ द अर्थ एक्सेस ऑफ द अर्थ एक्सेस ऑफ द अर्थ then and then axis of the earth full stop three chhatris or horizontal disc three chhatris or horizontal disc disc symbolizes three chhatris or horizontal disc symbolizes three ratna of buddhism symbolizes three ratna of buddhism three ratna of buddhism which is which is buddha dhamma sangha screen mirror on karo which is buddha dhamma sangha buddha dhamma sangha बुद्ध धम्म संघ चेक करो एक बार स्विच ऑफ करके ऑन करो तब आएगा देन फॉर द यू कीप राइटिंग दे विल चेक दैट दैट व्हाट इज हेयर देन फॉर द यू मेंशन बुद्ध द अवेकेंड वन बुद्ध द अवेकेंड वन धम्म डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ बुद्धिज्म बुद्ध द अवेकेंड वन dhamma doctrine of buddhism and sangha was the order of the order of the buddhism so sangha was the order of the buddhism so this is one structure order of the buddhism so please look at the structure that this is one of the structure which is the modern one the old one were already dilapidated there were some changes which were made in the old one so now the remnants of these structures so this you can see that this is the torana then so this is the torana and in this torana as you can see that there is a yaksha image also yakshini's image also used to be there yakshini's generally used to be there so there are many such imagery and then here the jataka stories are engraved on this railings then so this is one part then some of the stupas images you can see today so this is what is the adli stupa when asoka created the beginning in the beginning so adli stupas were like this only then so like this only and uh, this is what we created that pradakshina path then and then the structure medhi and uh, anda is fused over here then the harmika and uh, here often there was a one pillar also in the adli stupas then so a pillar was also created in the adli stupas and then the chhatris then so chhatris then after the early stupa you can see that sanchi stupa which i said to you that was the biggest of the stupa which asoka was created that which asoka created so the sanchi stupa you can see that the three chhatris then harmika space and then these all structures then four gateways as you can see that four gateways these all places then and uh, vedika then so vedika and uh, uh, that this the pradakshina path so this is what is the structure of the sanchi stupa then in sanchi if you go to sanchi so you will come across you will see the examples of many stupas not just one stupa but this area is synonymous with many stupas then so sanchi is also known for many stupas so these all stupas which i have that i have uh, incorporated in this one these all are the from the sanchi area only then so this is all about the stupa structure then so this is all about the stupa structure there is a one more part which is remaining for the writing purpose so what we have written so till this point of time what we have written it 
uh, we have written the symbolism involved in the stupa structure but there is one last symbolism that i need to quote yes so overall stupa stupa is considered as the microcosm listen this very carefully now i am coming to the last image uh what you want for the portal axis means that they know that the earth is rotating around its axis can we say that stupa is quite similar to pyramids uh, yes as we you have just uh, quoted something which i was going to share to you then these are the there are the some concepts in the world religions where you find similarities then and uh, it's all together that we do consider in the modern age that we are the most knowledgeable person and we have everything in fact that people of that time it amazes me that how come they had this kind of knowledge they were quite intellectual and they had understanding of everything but uh, only problem with the old ages was that these ancient ages the records which they created they are not available for us many of the records were burnt by those jealous uh, monarchs and then religious persecution these all happened and in this religious persecution not only the human beings were culled but also the people of other faith and their literature their records everything was burnt and everything was destroyed so that's the one problem that is the problem with the history that not uh, records as such are available so uh, this uh, see that abhinav of that already these ppts are there with the classroom team so generally i don't have uh, any such a stake in this one to uh, share with it, it with you they only ask to me that uh, do they need to share so i just give them my consent that you can share so i have no problem this is for you only this would be shared it's up to them that they are uploading today or tomorrow whenever because all these ppts and everything i have given to them already earlier so they will upload it and yesterday i told them that it must be uh, uploaded on your platforms so please uh, wait for one or two days maybe they will upload it then so in one or two days if they are not uploading it so then you can get back to me and then i will ask them once again so they have said that in a one or two days it will be uploaded so listen so what i was saying that yes haswadan nalanda was born where so many records were there so one last thing that stupa is considered as the microcosm of the universe and microcosm of the microcosm of the buddha's body then so in fact that this entire stupa structure is considered as the microcosm of the buddha and buddha uh so how come so i will create one image let give me little bit of time so one last image i'm trying not to be funny but this is what i was trying to create an image of buddha and please don't laugh on the image that how buddha looks like so bajak mat udana so now i 
No, I'm also laughing at my own <laughs> art. So now, the last comparison, which I'll make. So listen, that this Medhi structure. This Medhi structure, and here, the under. And then this last part. So, Medhi is synonymous to meditating legs of Buddha. Meditating legs. Then Anda is the middle body. Anda is synonymous to middle body of Buddha. And Harmika Yasti Chhatri. So Harmika Yasti Chhatri. HYC I have written. So it means that Harmika Yasti Chhatri the upper body part including the head of Buddha. Upper body of Buddha. So this is what is the symbolism involved in the stupa structure. Please mention. So please mention that Stupa structure is considered as stupa structure is considered as microcosm of the Buddha. Microcosm of the Buddha. Stupa structure is considered as the microcosm of the Buddha. Yes, Siddharth, this is the one which is 30% uh, of the page. <laughs> so this is the last image which I kept for the 30% of the page. So you can create it in the last 30% of the page. <laughs> okay, Devendra. I would be proud of you so. Okay. No, generally, I did had good hand at arts. But a board pe art banana is a different. When you give me a particular paper, so there my art would be better than this one. So microcosm, first you understand what I said that microcosm of the Buddha, meaning that smaller representation, one representation of the Buddha. So ESSV, what you wrote that it is similar to the pyramids, in fact that pyramids are also considered as the microcosm of the universe. So there are many religious structures in the world which are considered as the microcosm of the universe. Pyramids are one such example that which are considered as the microcosm of the universe, same way that this stupa is also the microcosm of the Buddha and at the same point of time universe. Then, So at the same point of time universe, so microcosm of Buddha and microcosm of universe. Now, uh, I will share one mythological story with you that was there in the Hinduism and that's one very relevant story to be shared over here. That there is a one story in the Hindu mythology also that once Lord Ganesh was asked that you must go and then you must do a parikrama of all the uh, that trilok that's what is called as trilok that three uh, kind of that universes then so all the trilok so then uh, Lord Ganesha he thought a little bit and then what he did that he started his steps and he made the uh, one circumambulation of his father and mother and then he said that. Trilok Parikrama is over. So here that in Hindu mythology, the image or the personality of the Lord Shiva and uh, Goddess Parvati, that was considered as the microcosm of the universe, which Lord Ganesha did. So this kind of concepts you m will find in the Oriental religions, that where they do say that one such religious structure is the microcosm of the universe. Then, and it is symbolic that once you do the parikrama of that place, so it is considered that you have done, done a parikrama of the universe. Then, so Brahmandi ki parikrama karli hai. So this is what the concept. So, <laughs> so yes, around Siva and then. So you guys know this story, yes. So please write, further you mention, microcosm of the Buddha and universe, whereby, Supa is the microcosm of the Buddha and universe, whereby, Medhi symbolizes meditating legs, Medhi symbolizes meditating legs, <laughs> meditating legs,
Yes, Bhuvana. That's right. <laughs> then you write, Anda symbolizes middle body of Buddha. Anda symbolizes middle body of Buddha. Middle body of Buddha. And Harmika Chhatri Yasti. Harmika Yasti Chhatri symbolizes head of Buddha. Symbolizes head of Buddha or upper part of the body, which includes the neck also. Then, so neck and head of Buddha. Then, so this is about the entire things that I needed to talk about the stupa. There is one more episode associated with the stupa, the type of the stupas in the world. Then, so that I will be covering in the next topic. Then, so let's begin with the next topic for the today's class, and that topic is the post Maurya period. Then, so post Maurya period. So, if you give me the permission, I will move to the next topic. I'm giving you a little bit of time. Do teen minute clearo and then accordingly when you send the reply, so I'll move to the post Moria age. And this post Maurya, which we are going to start, it is the one very often repeated portion in mains examination. Mujhe das saal mein koi question itna repeat hote huye nahi dikha jitna ki this is sculpture section of the post Maurya. So when first day we were writing those all topics, I mentioned you that the sculpture is the highlight of the post Maurya period. But there are many other things that we'll be seeing over here, including the cave architecture, which we started in the Mauryas. So here further, we'll be building upon the cave architecture. And then after the cave architecture, I will again move to the stupa. And then we will start this post Mauryan sculpture. So let's begin with this topic of the post Maurya art. So we are done with the Maurya art. And my request to you today that since this topic of the stupa, it involved so many concepts and so many things that so many facts are there, but to understand it with the awareness. So please revise it today only. Otherwise, agar jo aaj revise nahi kiya. So within 24 hours, you will forget most of the near about 60% of the things you will forget. And after the third day, you will be able, able to remember only 10%. So please revise this topic at least today. Because there is a lot involved in it and then revise it with the awareness. So let's move to the next topic. That is the post Maurya. Chalo, you all are done. So post Maurya art. So post Maurya art, when it comes to the post Maurya art and why we call that this age as the uh, somewhere around 200 BC, somewhere from 200 BC to 200 AD, these 400 years are considered as the post Maurya age. Listen a little bit, you don't need to write this part, we will be writing in the ancient uh, history part, but listen. So after the demise of the, uh, particularly Ahsoka, and Maurya rulers, their power got weakened, and Ahsoka was the one who was controlling the, uh, la that very large, uh, area in this country, Indian subcontinent. In fact, that his rule extended from the uh, north Kashmir to Kanyakumari and then in northeast to uh, the borders of the Pakistan and Iran. So his rule extended this much area, but after his death, his power, that Maurya's power got weakened. And within few years only, within 50 years, you can say that after the death of the Ahsoka, that Maurya kingdom got fragmented and 
many smaller dynasties emerged in the erstwhile Maurya areas and moreover some foreigners started to attack in India at that point of time. They also established their rule in India. So since the post Maurya age was an age of the fragmented polity, there was no centralized ruler, there was no centralized that one person whom can be called as the the controlling the very vast territory in India. In fact, they all shared some considerable part, but there was no central authority. So that's why this age is particularly considered as the shadow of the Maurya, post Maurya age. Then, so in this age, since our topic is concerned to the architecture, so what all topics we are going to see. So as I said to you, I will be starting with the cave. Then, so cave, then uske baad din, what was the development in the stupa in the post Maurya age and then sculpture. So this is the most important topic of the post Maurya age sculpture and in sculpture there are three styles of sculpture. So there are three styles of sculpture. This is Gandhara, that is Gandhara, Mathura and Amravati. So these three styles we are going to read in the sculpture of the post Maurya period. So please begin with the cave architecture. Cave. Post Mauryan cave. So post Mauryan cave we are going to start with. Now listen. So there are two bases of the post Mauryan cave. First I would talk about the type of the caves on the basis of the structure and second I will talk about the purpose of the cave. Then so there are two type of the cave on the basis of the purpose and there were three structures meaning that how they looked like that structure we need to see. So uh, you write this basis cave on the basis of on the basis of structure, cave on the basis of structure and here second would be the cave on the basis of purpose. Basis of purpose. So cave on the basis of structure and cave on the basis of basis of purpose. So the first one, the first part, ye heading liklo, cave on the basis of structure and here there were three type of the caves on the basis of structure, meaning that how they look like. So there are three structures that we are going to mention. In this, what is the modus operandi that we will be creating the structure and structure create karne ke baad, we will be writing the examples that which all places these kind of structures are there. Bas itna hi hai, but in the purpose, we will be writing about the two type of the caves and then we will list out the purpose. So here, uh, heading after heading. So next heading in this one, you can mention it as a A. And A you write upsidal vault cave. with pillars. Upsidal vault cave with pillars. Please write this name. Meanwhile, let me try once try once let me try this structure once again. Just let me look at that. Is me bahut kuch to nahi hai. Ek bar try karte. This will not go. So what is this upsidal vault? In fact, it is, it will look like a railway wagon then Upsidal vault is basically that the shape will look like to you railway wagon and you can say that it seems like the stupa that we have created. Aise hi dikhega, but 
स्तूपा थोड़ा सा ज्यादा वाइडन होता है बट दिस वन इज नॉट दैट वाइड सो दिस इज अपसाइडल वॉल्ट स्ट्रक्चर एंड देन एज आई मैंशन टू यू जिस गिव मी लिटिल बिट वे तो पूरा चला जाएगा नो मेनी टाइम्स वॉट हैपन्स दैट वेन यू क्रिएट सो मेनी थिंग्स ट्राई टू खुद ही बना लेते हैं ऐसे ही बिकॉज दैट स्ट्रक्चर इज नॉट वर्किंग गिव मी वन मोर सच अपॉर्चुनिटी टू क्रिएट द स्ट्रक्चर विदाउट यूजिंग दोज डिजिटल डिवाइसेस so now it's fine and then what i said that this looks like a railway wagon this word which we have written upsidal vault this shape is called as upsidal so this shape is called as upsidal and since it is with the pillars so we will have to create some pillars inside this one inside this structure so let me create some pillars so i will show you the image also but ek bar apne end pe banana bhi zaruri hai because exam mein as i said to you that exam you need to create this pillars or this images if at all this question is asked so inside pillars and at the back side of this particular upsidal vault cave you can see one votive stupa so mark it these are the pillars and this is votive stupa votive stupa and this overall structure upsidal vault upsidal vault first complete the structure part then i'll show you the original image and examples you will be writing so here nothing is to be written you need to understand the structure that ye kaise dikh raha hai and then example in this only this thing you need to remember so let's look at the image this is the upsidal vault as you can see that please look at the image so as you can see that this roof is it looks like the railway wagon railway ka dabba jaise hota hai na upar se aise mud jata hai so railway wagon you see that and uh, there are pillars in this hall and this is the votive stupa what is votive stupa is concept ko bhi samjho votive stupa basically any such thing could be votive it could be votive temple also votive stupa also votive mosque also so basically one smaller representation which is indoors that is called as votive so the small stupa which is indoors that is the votive stupa so this is the votive stupa in the uh, this particular image and this example is the ajanta so you can write in the example write in example ajanta in example you write ajanta example ajanta then next example bhaj cave these ajanta is in maharashtra bhaj cave also maharashtra as you can see that pillars are there and then there is a this kind of upsidal structure upsidal structure so this is bhaj cave ajanta bhaj cave both maharashtra then this is also the inside of the bhaj cave i have brought so you can see that votive stupa here little different from the one which was there in the ajanta but rest of the structures it is similar to the ajanta then no this is not the example of the uh, 
this one. Carla is not example. Yes, no example. Okay. So one more you write. Carla cave with votive stupa. So this is also Maharashtra. So Bhaj, Karla, and then Ajanta. These three examples. Bhaj, Karla, and Ajanta. These three examples you write in the this one. This upsidal vault cave with pillars. So Karla tak last likhe rehna. Then let's get back to the next structure. So this is the first type of the cave. Then three examples you have written. Maybe likh deta Ajanta, Bhaj and Karla. All of them in Maharashtra. Now, second you write Apsidal Vault Apsidal Vault Cave without pillars. Pahle wale mein kya tha? In the very first one with pillars but this second one is the without pillar. Second one is without pillars. And exactly same structure but no pillars. Exactly same structure without pillar, without votive stupa. Kuch bhi nahi hoga isme. No votive stupa, no pillar. So no votive stupa, no pillar, nothing else you need to write. And example you write. Example. Thana Nadsur. I'll show you the example, but Abilikhlo. Thana Nadsur cave and Pithal Khora cave. Thana Natsur cave and Pithal Khora cave. Again, both of them are in Maharashtra. Most of these examples we do get in Maharashtra only. Both of them in Maharashtra. Thana Natsur cave and then Pithal Khora cave. Please see the image. So Pithal Khora, though this is the entrance, but inside you will not find any such kind of the uh, pillar. And then uh, Kanheri is not the example, but upsidal vault without pillars. This is also one example. So this is the Thana Natsur cave. Then, but it is in a very dilapidated condition. That Thana Natsur cave, it's in a very dilapidated condition. And then the last category. Third, quadrangular hall, quadrangular hall, flat roof cave, flat roof cave. So quadrangular hall, flat roof cave. Not necessarily Siddharth, all the places. These all are state is enough. They don't ask, UPSC doesn't ask the places that particularly district. But in next topic, Joki Gupta period, again I'll be talking about the caves. And in this Gupta period, when I'll be talking about Ajanta Elora, so we'll be writing the districts also, like Aurangabad. So Abhi Jarurat nahi hai, you just need to know that this is the exact that in Maharashtra, that's enough. Then, so quadrangular hall, flat roof cave. Now, what it seems like? Quadrangular ka matlab ki char direction honge. Okay? Meaning that there would be four walls, that is quadrangular, and flat roof cave. So this would be this kind of structure as you can see that it is a flat roof cave. Then so flat roof cave with four walls. So this is what was the structure and example of this, uh, this one is that example you write Mahakali Kondivite cave. Mahakali Kondivite cave. So example of this one is Mahakali Kondivite cave 
of Maharashtra. And uh, it is a flat roof quadrangular hall. So please see the image. This is the Mahakali Khondivite cave of the Maharashtra. It, again in Maharashtra. Generally, people do ask that ki itna sara cave Maharashtra mein kyo tha. There is a that geographical factors which favors, you know, that stable kind of rock. And when you are reading the geography, so you must have come across the three type of the rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and then also metamorphic. So the most stable kind of rocks are find, found over here in Maharashtra, and uh, it's better to create ro uh, caves in the stable kind of rock. When you try to create a cave inside the Himalayas, you cannot be confirmed that how many days it will survive because Himalaya is an unstable mountain. And since this is the Deccan Plateau area, so in this area, that very stable uh, kind of rocks are there. So once you create a structure, it survives for centuries and centuries and onwards. So that's the one reason that majority of the caves you find over here in the Maharashtra. Then, so you find over here in the Maharashtra. So this is all about the caves on the basis of structure. A purpose wale pe aate, purpose wale se question was there in 2014 prelims. Then, so in 2014 prelims, they do ask a question and that was an easy question, not a difficult question. So let's get back to the part. So here, what I wrote, cave on the basis of purpose. Satpura Sahyadri ranges, yes. And then also the Satpura Sahyadri, then you have uh, this Trimbak range, which is closer to Nasik, then Bhim Sankar uh, area. So there are many such geography. You guys have read this all. I also had to read it, but I forgot everything. What all ranges were there. Some I remember, but not all of them. So please mention the heading cave on the basis of purpose cave on the basis of purpose then and the very first one you write a chaitya chaitya so what is this Chaitya? Listen, here we are not talking about the structure. Here we are talking about the purpose. So those all examples which we have written earlier, they could be Chaitya or Viharas. Then, for example, that Ajanta is both Chaitya and Vihara. There are both the things. Then, So Chaitya and Vihara, we need to see what is Chaitya. So Chaitya is basically, when there is a Chaitya cave, so Chaitya is basically, it is a type of the prayer hall for the monks. So Chaitya is basically prayer hall for the monks and as you have seen that Ajanta is one example. The image that I was showing to you in which there was a stupa and there were pillars so that was the Chaitya hall of the Ajanta in which the monks can worship. Then, So this is the prayer hall for the monks. Then, So Chaitya is the prayer hall for the monks and the second structure is the Vihara. So second structure is the Vihara and in the same premise you can find that Viharas also. Then so you can find Viharas also. I will come up with one structure. Yes, Abhidika, uh, we will see that one. So Vihara is basically, it is the residence place for the monks. In Buddhism and in all the oriental religions, majority of the uh, that this oriental religions, it was a tradition that they were on the move all the time but in the monsoon season particularly in the buddhist tradition it was prohibited that in monsoon season they must reside inside the viharas and they must not move or venture out then so they must not move and venture out so these three four months of the rainy season these buddhist monks they were residing inside the viharas then so they residing inside the viharas and moreover this was a ritual kind of thing in the buddhism whereby these monks that in this uh, three month or four month period they talk about that what all kind of 
uh, sin that they have done in the previous year and they took resolve that they will not repeat the sin that they have done previously. So they all are confessing their crime, their guilt, their sin with each other in this three month period or four month period and then they take resolve that from next time onwards they will not repeat or they will not do this kind of sin. In fact, they can do some new ones. So, aisa nahi hai, but they took resolve that they, even they have uttered a single lie, so they all, these all they uh, confess while being uh, in the Vihara. So please mention Chaitya, Chaitya ko likho. Chaitya, Chaitya, where the prayer hall for the monks, prayer hall for the monks. Chaityas were the prayer hall for the monks. And Vihara, you write. Vihara. Residence or shelter for the monks. Residence or shelter for the monks. Residence or shelter for the monks. Then further you mention, usme likho, in the Vihara part, further you write. In Buddhism, in Buddhism, in Buddhism, it was the tradition, in Buddhism, it was the tradition that during, during monsoons, during monsoons, Monks needed to, during monsoons, monks needed to stay in Biharas. Stay in Viharas and, and confess and confess all their ill doings and confess all their ill doings, guilt or sins confess all their ill doings confess uh, uh, ill doings guilt or sins guilt or sins guilt and sins so this is about that chaitya vihara now you see this image karla cave i showed you one image with the upsidal vault pillar and then also what is stupa? It would be after this one. So you can see that this image, these are the viharas. They are the residences of the monks. Then so these are the viharas that ki pe monk rehte hai. These all places monks are living. And this part which you saw in the other image. So this is the entrance of the Chaitya. So here Chaitya is also there and Vihara also there. So let's look at the Chaitya image once again. So Karla cave, this is the Chaitya. The entrance I showed you. And then this one part was the Vihara. Okay? So, ek premise mein dono ho sakte hai. For example, in uh, Ajanta, there were Chaityas and Vihara. In uh, this Bhaj, Karla, every place that they do have the Chaityas and Vihara. But kuch kuch jagah pe. For example, Nasik caves. So, Nasik caves were only Viharas, no Chaitya. Nasik caves, only Vihara, no Chaitya. Then, so chaho to example riklo. You write, you write. Ajanta, Bhaj and Karla, Ajanta, Bhaj and Karla had both, Ajanta, Bhaj and Karla had both, had both Chaityas and Biharas, had both Chaityas and Biharas, but, but Nasik caves, but Nasik caves are only viharas but nasik caves are only viharas so this is all about that this cave section in the post maurya period ek bar fir se we will be seeing cave in the gupta period and that would be the last of the cave section so now before the break we will see the stupa post mauryan stupa So let's look at the next topic that is the post Mauryan stupa.
postmodern stupa here also i'll create one image let's give me i will not take much of your time over here i'll create quickly this is stupa So here, what I have done that I have created more number of chhatris. Then, so please keep a focus on this one. More number of chhatris I have created. In fact, I have created five, and uh, then so the only things I will label which are different from the. Mauryan stupas. Then, so in post Maurya, you have this pradakshina path, but this pradakshina path is known as the lower pradakshina path. Lower pradakshina path, and this area is known as upper pradakshina path. lower production path and upper production path then you have increased number of chhatris so that i am not writing but these two production path you must mention and then one more thing that you will be mentioning in this structure isme aise normal bana sakte isme koi comparison nahi hai you uh, go by that the way you are writing in the paper isme no instruction i'm uh, that there is no instruction only one image is there only this image is there so one more image i'll create and that is basically the image of the buddha once again i'll try to create one more image of buddha
So this image you create and please write this image as the Manushi Buddha. Manushi Buddha. I'll explain that what is the meaning of this one. So three things you need to mention. One is the upper Pradakshinapat, lower Pradakshinapat and Manushi Buddha and then these five Chhatris. Then, so here I'm writing increased, increased number of Chhatris. Thailand Vale Buddha. No, the same kind of thing you will find at my place also. That uh, you, if you come to that my hometown, so there all the type of the Buddhas you will see. That Thailand Vale Bi, India Vale Bi, or Japan Vale Bi, Sri Lanka Vale Bi. These all there are many temples. In fact, in that at, at my place, that Sri Lankan temple is there, Myanmar's temple is there, Thailand temple is there, Burmese temple is there. Then and there is the original Mahapadnirvana stupa, the Asoka's one. Then, then we have uh, pagodas also. Then apart from the pagodas, a museum is also there, and uh, uh, there are some good hotels also, not five stars, but there are good hotels also. So now, listen, that what is this change in the stupa structure? First of all, there were two Pradakshinapath and these two Pradakshinapath, it is symbolic to the division in the Buddhism, then symbolic to the division in the Buddhism or two path of the Buddhism. So one is considered as that since this topic I have not covered, so abhi ke liye bas likhna, theke? Kyunki Mahayan and Hinayan Buddhism, I will be teaching you in the next topic, jab religion padhayenge. So the lower production of path, it symbolized the Hinayan path of Buddhism and upper one symbolized the Mahayan path of Buddhism. Because this point of time Buddhism has been got divided into two formal uh, sects and these sects were the Hinayan Mahayan. So both were symbolized here. Then Manushi Buddha that by this point of time the idol worship has started in Buddhism. So there was installation of the image of the Buddha in a human form in the uh, premise of the stupa. So that one is called as the Manushi Buddha. And this increasing number, that increased number of the Chhatri, they, uh, the first three will always symbolize the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. But then after, whatever number of the Chhatris that are added, they symbolizes the growth of the Buddhism. Then, so this is what is the symbolic meaning involved over here. One more such change at this point of time. Ek bar sunlo, aur ek bar mein so one more such change at this point of time was in the this uh, Vedika structure. That during the Maurya period, Vedika was created with the wood. Image mein jo dekha wo to naya hai, but Vedika was created with the wood and at this point of time these all wooden Vedikas were replaced with the stone Vedika. So stone ka banane lage the is time pe. So that was the one change which happened at this point of time. So please mention. So Subra has asked those places. Chalo, kal ki, kal to class nahi hai hamare. Next class mein I'll bring some of the images or real images which I have clicked from my own phone. So I will bring those images, I'll show you, no issues. So please write that during the post Maurya period, during the post Maurya period, a second, during the post Maurya period, a second, Pradakshina Path was introduced, a second Pradakshina Path was introduced at the level of Pradakshina path was introduced at the level of Medhi. At the level of Medhi, which symbolized at the level of Medhi, which symbolized Mahayan path of Buddhism, which symbolized Mahayan path of Buddhism, which symbolized Mahayan path of Buddhism. The lower Pradakshina path, the lower Pradakshina path symbolized, the lower Pradakshina path symbolized Hinayan path of Buddhism. 
lower pradakshina path symbolized senior path of buddhism <laughs> definitely if you guys come to uh, my place i have a big house at my hometown so <laughs> even chota bhi hoga to bhi acha rahega that sab log ek hall mein rahenge and we'll do some kind of masti also so <laughs> i will invite you guys to my home and then i'll brew some tea for you i am expert of the tea so please write further you mention mahayan and hinayan path of buddhism then you mention uh, the number of chhatris the number of chhatris the number of chhatris started to increase the number of chhatris started to increase at this point of time started to increase at this point of time which which symbolizes which symbolizes which symbolizes growth of buddhism which symbolizes growth of buddhism which symbolizes growth of buddhism then one last not one last but there are two factors then you mention there was installation of there was installation of there are there was installation of a human form buddha there was installation of a human form buddha human form buddha in the premise of installation of human form buddha in the premise of stupa which symbolizes which symbolizes which symbolizes the beginning of idol worship in buddhism which symbolizes the beginning of idol worship in buddhism idol worship in buddhism full stop see that akash <laughs> your title is very nice it you seems like that family member of the deepak chahar so selected ya not selected <laughs> see that selection is not the criteria then and any such thing that i don't go by that any such thing if you happen to visit that place if i would be at my home it doesn't matter you are all invited at my place but if you happen to visit that place then that is the prime criteria it's not about selection in fact i don't run after the people who get selected they that's their job they have done a lot of work they have achieved something and then my job is done with them so please write further moreover 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 the wooden vedika moreover the wooden vedika moreover the wooden vedika <laughs> wooden vedika of the maurya age was replaced with stone of the maurya age was replaced with stone of the maurya age was replaced with stone then so was replaced with stone so this is one thing and uh, replaced with stone so that's the final you write some examples and there is a one logical question yes as we has asked is there no relics of buddha in this stupa i'll get back to this one yes there is no relic because kit write karoge buddha ka relic already asoka has uh, that what he has done that he has divided it into the nine parts so it will mean that again you are taking something from those stupas that's not possible so not all the all the stupas uh, do have the relics of buddha so pehle ek bar example likh lo then i'll get back to this type of the stupas in the contemporary world so plus you write example bharahut stupa example bharahut stupa in madhya pradesh and uh, amravati stupa of andhra amravati stupa of andhra so these two are the examples so bharahut stupa of madhya pradesh and amravati stupa of andhra 
तोरणास दे डू हैव तोरणा है वो मैंने बनाया नहीं बट इतना ही बनाया जितना कि डिफरेंस था तोरणास वुड ऑलवेज बी देर अदरवाइज पीपल विल हैव टू जंप द वॉल देन वो अच्छा नहीं लगता ना जंप द वॉल मेनी पीपल विल नॉट बी एबल टू सी वॉट इज देयर इन साइड सो देर मस्ट बी द तोरणास so barahu to stupa of madhya pradesh now this stupa is no more only the remnants of this stupas are there and even amravati stupa the original structure was lost the new one is created at the same place so let's look at the image of the new one so this is the barahu to stupa theek okay? hai so it is that structure some of the railings and things are kept inside the museum but no more stupa is there and the amravati stupa this is the new structure which was created the old one is lost then so old one is lost but at the same place new structure was created theek okay? hai so this is about the stupas of that time theek okay? hai ab ek last part related to the stupas and here the stupa topic would be complete there would be no discussion of the stupa from here onwards in gupta period will not be discussing the stupa in fact one example we'll discuss but not the features then so uh so lumbini and kushinagar are the favorite destination yeah for the localites uh, this is the favorite destination <laughs> then so ek last likho that types of stupa types of stupa types of stupa overall not just in the post maurya time but overall overall so so saririka saririka stoop saririka stoop meaning it is a word saririk meaning sarir body so this will have remains of buddha contains relics of buddha then second you write this second angika angika stoop then so what is angika here the bodily remains that relics of the buddha are there angika is that the articles which were used by the buddha the articles which were used by the buddha they are kept inside this stupa so you mention articles used by buddha used by buddha kept inside stupa kept inside stupa so articles used by buddha for example that buddha's cloth buddha's comb buddha's uh, that uh, sandals then so these all kind of things that what all things his bowl then so these all things are kept over here and the majority of the stupa so majority of the premise may where buddha arya has asked so uh, it's in the premise not inside the stupa structure bahar mein jo parisar hai na premise hai na premise mein rakhte the then third one you write upadeshika stupa upadeshika stupa and this stupa has nothing related to the articles used by buddha or relics of the buddha in fact it is for the propagation of the buddha's message then so this is for for propagation of buddhism for propagation of buddhism so this is stupa is for propagation of buddhism then so for propagation of buddhism 
then so i will give you just like yesterday's and hopefully that aaj kuch aisa nahi hona chahiye so 5 6 minute break a short break and then again we'll continue with the uh, sculpture wo bhi thoda bada part hai thoda time chahiye so at least we will start today theek hai so 5 6 minute break bada so listen some of you and this is what happens that when i say something when i give you something so you ask for the example that's okay it's you to identify that which would be under the upadeshika angika i can tell you angika is basically that where the some of the remains of the buddha that some of the uh, this cloth remains and then other articles used by him they are in thailand also they are in myanmar also they are in india also anuradhapuram for example then sadnath is example lumbini is example where angika are there but when you talk about the upadeshika 90% of the stupa all over the world all over the world and new stupas they are upadeshika so there is no such specific examples to be written it was this detail i gave to you because of that you needed to know that what all type of stupas do exist you don't need to remember that what all examples are there only thing that you need to remember the early stupa nine examples then so let's quick uh, let's begin with the sculpture and uh, since this is also a big topic so sculpture so i'm not writing sculpture here but first what i am doing that uh three columns i'll create first then so let's create these three columns and these columns please mention so basis gandhara amravati so this way you create these vertical columns then so these vertical columns please create and this column in this column very first one you write basis gandhara mathura and amravati so gandhara mathura and amravati so there are few things that we'll cover today basis so in basis there are some details like what kind of stone who patronized it what all religions associated so it's a factual information that we are going to write in the basis and then uh, respectively in these all categories but when it comes to the features so there will be so much of comparison in this particular section so i will get back to that one but quickly you write the basis and basis in all of them then so basis so basis me sabse pehla uh just give me a little bit of time अरे यार ये तो चल ही नहीं रहा है सो फर्स्ट वन यू राइट एरिया एरिया वेर दीज स्कल्पचर्स वेर क्रिएटेड north west frontier province north west frontier province mathura so it's western up western up western up that's closer to mathura amravati lower krishna godavari valley lower krishna godavari valley in andhra so area gandhara was in northwest frontier province mathura western up 
and Amravati in northwest frontier, oh, sorry that, lower Krishna Godavari valley. Then you write type of stone, type of stone So type of stone, in Gandhar you write grey sandstone. It was created from grey sandstone. Mathura was created from red sandstone. Red sandstone. Amravati was created from white marble. So all of them are using different kind of stones. All of them are using Gandhara using grey sandstone, Mathura using red sandstone and Amravati using white marble. Then after the type of the stone, you write patronization. Patronization. What do we mean by the patronization? If at all any kingdom or any monarch is financing it, supporting it. That is what we call patronizing it. So Gandhara was patronized by Kushan dynasty. Patronized by Kushana. Same is true about the Mathura also. Mathura was also patronized by Kushanas. But Amravati one was not patronized by the Kushanas. <laughs> it is in the Andhra area. So it was patronized by Satvahan and Ikchavaku. Patronized by Satvahan and Ikchavaku. Please see the spelling which I am writing. Satvahan and Ichivaku. So two dynasties patronized the Amravati, that is Satvahan and Ichivaku. Then, next, after patronization, influence, influence, so influence on this one, meaning that if any outside influence is there or any other type of sculpture, which do find resemblance in these all sculptures. So when it comes to Gandhara, so Gandhara has a Greco-Roman Bactrian influence. So you write here Greco-Roman Bactrian. Please don't write Bacteria, it is Bactrian. So B-A-C-T-R-I-A. M. Bactrian influence. Greco Roman Bactrian influence, also called as Hellenistic influence. Hellenistic, also known as Hellenistic influence. So, Greco Roman Bactrian influence or Hellenistic influence. Then, Mathura, totally indigenous. Totally indigenous matlab koi bahar ka influence nahi hai Take hai totally indigenous then amravati completely it is also completely indigenous completely indigenous meaning that there is no outside influence no outside influence based in indian tradition only then after the patronization next you write and please write fast. <laughs> so next you write religions associated. Religions associated with these all with these all sculptures. So religion associated with Gandhara. Only Buddhism. Only Buddhism. But in Mathura, Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, sculpture related to all the three religions. So, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism. So, all of them. So, all of them are here in this one, in Mathura. And Amravati, only Buddhism. Amravati only Buddhism. 
so please write fast i'll give you one minute and then after i'll move to the feature so ye basis mein ye sara khatam ho gaya since this is a factual part more important is to remember the features of these all and there uh, in this features there has to be some comparison then so i hope you must have been done with the same these all three combined they are commonly called as the hellenistic influence that's only you need to know so in features you'll get to know that what is this hellenistic so let's begin with the next part i'm moving it a little bit here so i hope most of you are done with the same and uh chalo i'll i'll take next page another page and in this page whenever you want to revisit i will get back to that page once again but ek bar fir se wapas ye table bana lo this table and uh, in this table so you will be writing the we'll be comparing the features of these all so the very first thing that i'm going to do i will compare the features of mathura and uh, gandhara because dono mein kuch similarities hain and there are some differences then so hell lot of differences are there and uh, both are interconnected so let's look at the gandhara and mathura amravati for the feature purpose there is very less amount of feature that we will be discussing in the amravati so here you can mention feature features and uh, gandhara amravati no second place don't write amravati second place mathura gandhara mathura and amravati but for the time being i will not discuss amravati wo last mein akele karenge but in dono ka comparison hai so this is what we are going to start right now so features discussion features discussion so listen first that when i am going to write about the features of the gandhara listen this carefully near about near about a uh, हा कंटिन्यूएशन भी कर सकते हो मुझे दिस स्क्रीन इज वेरी स्मॉल आई कैन नॉट डू द सेम अदरवाइज वेन एवर द वाइट बोर्ड वॉज देयर आई वॉज यूजिंग इट फुल सो इसमें इश्यू है कि मुझे तो नया स्क्रीन लेना पड़ेगा बट यू कैन यू विल बी डूइंग इट इन द कॉन्टिन्यूएशन सो लिसन दैट वेन इट कम्स टू द फीचर्स ऑफ माथुरा एंड गंधारा देन सो नियर अबाउट सिक्सटी फाइव टू सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द फीचर्स आर अपोजिट टू इच अदर इनफैक्ट एग्जैक्टली अपोजिट टू इच अदर सो वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू कि पहले हम लिखेंगे गंधारा के फीचर्स देन फर्स्ट वी विल राइट द गंधारा फीचर्स एंड एग्जैक्ट अपोजिट ऑफ द सेम विल बी राइटिंग इन द मथुरा एंड देन वी विल मूव इन टू द स्पेसिफिक और ऑल टूगेदर डिफरेंट फीचर्स ऑफ द टू सो लिसन that when it comes to the gandhara sculpture you need to have and mathura sculpture you need to have some cheat code without this cheat code it will be difficult to remember these details and then i do have the cheat code then not cheat code but ideas to remember it then ideas to remember the fact and in previous class also i requested to you guys that to create a mnemonics then so there are many innovative ways to remember the facts then there are many innovative ways to uh, remember the facts and many of these innovative ways you can create it so the one which i have created which i am going to share with you so the very first feature which i am going to write in the 
Gandhara sculpture that would decide the path of the that would decide the course of the features in the Gandhara. So when it comes to the very first feature to be mentioned, so the most of the images and a core disclaimer here. When I am writing some feature of the Gandhara or any of this one, Mathura, so please don't consider it is hundred percent. We are talking the majority case. Suppose that I am saying that spiritual Buddha was created in Gandhara, so majority case. Then there could always be exceptions. Nothing is watertight compartment. Then so we are talking about the majority case. Then so please mention in the. Gandhara, the very first feature, spiritual, spiritual image of Buddha was created. So the very first I have mentioned, spiritual image of Buddha in this one. So spiritual image of the Buddha, meaning that what is the spiritual? When we talk about the spiritual, so generally that spiritual person will have no expression. Sometime people uh, configure it as sad image. Then it's not sad, but it is expressionless. Then no joy, no sorrow, then no happiness. Then so this is what you call spiritual. That person is in the state of the desirelessness. Then so spiritual image of the Buddha was created. So the opposite of this one, obviously that when somebody has no expression on the face, no expression in his body, so the opposite of this would be the expression. And here the kind of expression in the Mathura was delighted Buddha. So delighted, delighted image of Buddha. So on the basis of this, we are going to build the features. In fact, it may seem difficult at the first time, but it's very easy to remember these all things which we are going to discuss right now. Ek benefit tab hota jab tum log class mein hote, I don't write in this section. I generally ask this question to you and you are the one who will tell me the features. But since it is not possible and uh, possible kya? Batla possible keh sakte hai, but it will take a hell lot of time. And uh, in response screen, pe dekho, fir yaha pe karo, that will take a lot of time. So let me share with you. First, visualize a person, person who is spiritual and then state of affair in his body that how a spiritual person will look like. Then how would be his hairs, right? Starting from the hairs, then we will look at his eyes, then we will look at his cloth, then ornaments he is wearing. So. Just on the basis of this, that first you remember the spiritual image of Buddha in Gandhara and on the basis of the spiritual image, try talking about that how a spiritual person will look like and that's exactly what is the feature in the uh, Gandhara sculpture. So the very first thing, a spiritual person, my question to you, though I will not be looking at this one, that response screen, but I'm asking this question if you'd be uh, giving the response. So. What would be the state of affair of the hairs of the spiritual Buddha? Will it be that our spiritual image, anybody who is a spiritual, will he be so much concerned about combing his hair all the time or he will not be concerned about combing the hair? So second is the true that a spiritual person has nothing to do with that maintaining the uh, external beauty. He is working on the internal grace. Then, so then his hair would be curly hair. So we are starting with the hair, dire dire, baki body part ka bhi discussion karenge. So the uh, next feature I am mentioning that curly or wavy hair. Then, pehle ye sab kuch likh lo. Yes, very good. Then, so not concerned. So curly or wavy hair. Very good. You have sent the replies. Base the rena. I will see meanwhile. Then second thing that when it comes to a spiritual person, so uh, a spiritual person, will he be concerned about, no, eyes pe aate hain, pehle aankh ye ho gaya, then come to the eyes. So how we, how do we depict a spiritual person, his eyes, how we saw the eyes of a spiritual person, will it be full closed or a spiritual person when he is in meditation, so what would be the state? Half eye closed or full eye closed? Full eye closed ka matlab ho jayega, so ra hai. Then, so half eye closed. So, spiritualism is depicted from half closed eyes. So, second feature would be half closed eyes. Half closed eyes. Then, 
नॉट कंप्लीटली क्लोज कंप्लीटली क्लोज का मतलब चलो तुम लोग ठीक हो बट कंप्लीटली क्लोज का मतलब सो भी गया सो दिस इज हाउ दैट इन इमेज इट इज डिपिक्टेड दैट लिटिल बिट ऑफ आई इज ओपन दैट इज द मार्क ऑफ द स्पिरिचुअलिज्म हैव यू सीन दैट लॉर्ड शिवा थर्ड आई लिटिल बिट ऑफ ओपन दैट इज द स्पिरिचुअलिज्म देन सो दैट काइंड ऑफ सो हाफ क्लोज आईज ठीक है सो हाफ क्लोज आईज देन उसके बाद देन tisra question the third question that a spiritual person will it, he re, regularly he will be shaving his face or there would be hairs on the face so obviously a uh, uh, that a spiritual person he is not concerned about the external beauty so he would be not he would not be shaving uh, his face regularly and there could be some beards and mustaches then so beards and mustaches then so beards and mustaches would be there and i'm not saying in all the cases in majority of the cases that beards and mustaches you can see ha ye alag baat hai ki aajkal ke time pe keeping beards and mustaches it is the fashion theek hai so it is the fashion but generally generally that keeping that was not concerned about that external beauty so uh you right unsaven face unsaven face then so unsaven face yes that was one thing which happened in the lockdown that everyone became spiritual in lockdown so spiritual in lockdown then we are writing these all in gandhara abhi mathura mein sirf ek hi likha hai usko baad mein likhenge then then after face part is complete after face part is complete let's look at the neck of the person and when a spiritual person is there so obviously that neck area generally people do wear some kind of ornaments so either he would be wearing no ornaments or very less if at all he is wearing any ornaments so very less ornaments or no ornaments at all then so next you write no ornaments no ornaments or very less ornament or very less ornament no ornament or very less ornament hey again you guys have started टॉपिक तो पढ़ लो चार बार क्वेश्चन आया है मेंस में <laughs> और तुम लोग इस पे स्टार्ट हो गए नेटफ्लिक्स एंड ऑल दैट बाज नहीं आने वाले हो तुम लोग देन नो ऑर्नामेंट्स और वेरी लेस ऑर्नामेंट्स नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट आफ्टर दिस वन लुक एट द क्लॉथ्स ऑफ अ स्पिरिचुअल पर्सन देन सो लेट्स टेक एग्जांपल ऑफ वन स्पिरिचुअल पर्सन गांधी व्हेन गांधी बिकेम वेरी स्पिरिचुअल इन हिज लाइफ in the first half of the gandhi's life you know that he was trying to wear those all western things in fact when he was in england so he tried to brought all those expensive stuff for himself that those english hat and then those tuxedo coats and then everything the boots were finest of the quality so he tried to become an englishman while being in england then but when the realization hit him and then it hit him so hard that in england rather than he tried to become an englishman but he rather became more of an indian and when he was completely on that he embarked on the completely on the path of the spiritualism so then you know that what gandhi was wearing he was wearing just one dhoti and then apart from the dhoti there was a one kind of that shawl on his body otherwise gandhi was uh, not wearing any other that expensive stuff or more kind of clothes and that's how he was often quoted in england as the fakir then so he's looking like a fakir so spiritualism meaning that optimum level of the cloth not so much of influential clothes then so optimum clothes optimum clothes so his south africa tenure was after the england study then so so optimum clothes theek hai ab ye to ho gaya then one more thing have you i'm i'm just that since we have we are done with the modern indian history so example theek hai that gandhi ko yahan hum log la dete hain 
Have you seen the body of the Gandhi? A fragile body. Then a fragile body where there is no such lump of the mass then, and then fat is not there. So fatty body is not there. But he was uh, basically that he was a thin person. So when you see that Gandhara sculpture, if they are practicing spiritualism, so a spiritual Buddha would be more thin body than thin that there would be no fat depicted in the body. So fat would not be depicted, but muscled body, that muscles and bones would be visible. So in some cases, so you write, muscles and bones visible. muscles and bones visible then so this is what is the comparison which we need which we needed to write ab kuch nahi karna hai next wale mein see the opposite likh de raha hai So now, it will take hardly one minute to write the opposite features in the Mathura. It is as simple as that. If you remember this particular part, this is the cheat code for you, that spiritual image of the Buddha. Accordingly, you yourself can think on these lines then, and uska opposite yahan pe likh do. The features are complete. So, curly or wavy hair, yahan pe kya hoga? What will be the opposite of this one? So, combed hair. Combed hair. Then, then half closed eyes, full open eyes, full open eyes. Then, then unseven face, opposite would be seven face. Then, no ornaments or less ornaments, what would be the opposite? More ornaments, more ornaments. Optimum cloth, then, and here would be the maximal cloth. Or oh, this one. Not maximal, but that luxurious, you can write, right? Semi luxurious, semi luxurious cloths, then, muscles and bones visible. Then here, round body. Khate pite ghar ka. Jaise hum log hote hai na, khate pite ghar ke. Ghar pe ek bar chale jao to, your mother will always say, and my mother also says that, is bar tum duble ho gaye ho. Then, so they, for, for them that you are, even if you are doing exercise, and you are just trying to maintain your weight, but for your family members, you have become so stricken and weak. So this is a common song, which you see at your home. So muscles and bone visible, and here, round body. Khate pite ghar ka, chaho to Hindi mein likh lena. So khate pite ghar ka. So this is what is the difference between the uh, the two and also the features. Difference at the same point of time and also the features. Now separately we will discuss some of the specific features of the uh, these all. Nain ladkiyon ke case mein to alag ho jata hai, but ladke hamesa maa ko duble hi lagte hai. लड़कियों की शादी करनी होती है ना, so they emphasize that थोड़ा और weight कम कर लो। अभी बात करेंगे ये सस्वी, that's not complete, that's a similarity, आभा मंडल और hello, that is a similarity. I just mentioned about the comparison, the opposites. Still, there are there is much to talk about this one. So now I hope, and I just want to know that now it seems easy to you. I said to you, I promised to you once I was in the modern classes that I would try to make art and culture little easier to you. I don't know how much easier it has become to you, but otherwise, I will try from my own end that it must become little easier to you, so that you must not feel that it is a burden. This subject is not a burden. 
In fact, we will have to devise those ways in which we can make it interesting and also at the same point of time we can retain the information and use for our own benefit. So, after this one, chalo, I'm happy that you guys are finding it little simpler. So, now I will talk about the special features of this one and last may ek similarity bhi bataunga dono ke beech mein, theke? So, let's talk about that next part. So, you can continue in the same, in, you can continue in the same table. Mere liye kya hai ki mujhe ek alag table lena padega. So, you continue with the same table. Usi mein niche banate jau. So I am creating only two tables here. Since I am comparing only Mathura and Gandhar, so uni dono ko likh As I said to you that uh, Amravati, we will take up later in the next class. So again, you can mention here Gandhara. And then here Mathura. So now, here I am writing special features. Special features. Then, so special features. So in special features, let's write something. So Roman. So in Gandhara, Roman features. Since it is the one, I, what you have written in the beginning, that Greco-Roman and Greco-Roman and Bactrian influence. So I will have to write what is the Roman in the Gandhara, what is the Greco in Gandhara, and what is Bactrian in the Gandhara. Then, so, iske basis pe aaj jana, aur jo bhi question aya hai mains ke paper mein, last year, the question which was there, I think in 2019 mains. So try to attempt that question if you are able to solve that question or not. So Roman, so Roman feature, tall image, tall image, tall image, then after that large ear lobe, large ear lobe, tall image, large ear lobe, then large forehead, large forehead and broad shoulders, broad shoulders. For this also I will give you cheat code. Isko kaise yaad karoge? What are Roman things are there? And uh, see that many of you must not have seen these all things which I am going to quote. But at least jisne dekha hai uske liye to kam se kam helpful hoga. So my question to you is that, that not question, I am just trying to figure out that how many of you have seen the movie Gladiator? That how many of you have seen the movie Gladiator? Many of you, I hope so. Gladiator is one of the very famous and one of my favorite also. So, uh, in Gladiator, the character, I'm talking about the Russell Crowe. So he is the one who is playing the role of the Gladiator. And who were the Gladiators? Gladiators were the warriors of the Roman area. You, uh, you must have known or you must be knowing that out of the wonders of the world, there is a one wonder of the world in Italy's, uh, Italy and this is known as the Italy's Colosseum. Colosseum is an amphitheater in which, yes, many of you, so I can see, Rabo has not seen, but other, Abhinav has seen half. Chalo, Snehil has not seen. Koi baat nahi, I'm just telling you the concept. Then, so long back, usse koi bahut farak nahi padta hai. That is, uh, I'm just telling you the concept that, at least if you have not seen the movie Gladiator, so you just remember that at least you know that this wonder of the world, amphitheater in the Italy, that is Colosseum, and if Taj Mahal is one of the wonder of the world, so so as this uh, Colosseum. And in this Colosseum, this gladiator fight used to happen. Then, so gladiator fights used to happen, large number of people, it's a kind of a stadium in which large number of people are gathered, monarch is gathered, and these gladiators are fighting. So, if you have to write a Roman feature, where is this gladiator fight? In Rome. And in Rome, so Roman feature. So, what are the images, uh, what are the uh, that bodily features of a 
warrior so these are the tall that a warrior would be a gladiator would be tall then he will have a large ear lobe kaan se zyada sunai dega taki wo animal se bhi lad sake aadmi se bhi lad sake large forehead so it's a feature और इसके लिए तुम एक और याद कर सकते हो दैट गेम ऑफ थ्रोन्स माउंटेन यू कैन रिमेंबर दैट ही वाज अ वॉरियर देन एंड मोर ओवर वॉरियर द ग्रेट फोरहेड वाज विद हिम सो अ फाइटर विल हैव मोर ब्रॉडर फीचर्स इन हिज बॉडी सो टॉल इमेज लार्ज इयर लोब एंड देन लार्ज फोरहेड एंड ब्रॉड सोल्जर्स देन सो ब्रॉड सोल्जर्स so broad soldiers so these are the characters of the warrior and warriors in the ancient times they were mostly playing the games in the roman colosseum then so aise yaad kar sakte ho isko so ye features roman ho gaye these are all are the roman features yes so it's not i'm just trying to simplify that how you'll be remembering kyunki mujhe bhi ye difficulty hue the when i was trying to memorize these all fact so i was i, I was not getting any idea that how i would be remembering this much facts so i tried to innovate and i'm sharing those things with you so this is how i remembered that i remembered a feature of a roman warrior and then i wrote these all things now greek features so greek features so next one is the greek features so you write greek greek features yes you can go with the rana dugubatti in the uh, bahubali but wo hai ki wo indian ho jayega na to gladiator mein isliye example diya because it was the roman thing gladiator was the roman thing that's why i gave you exam example of the gladiator but you can you can as you can uh, that you can take up indian examples also put it over here and then usi tarah se yaad kar lo yeah <laughs> you can write roman features mein rana dugubatti features and then you can visualize so now come to the greek features here also i <laughs> would like to know that how many of you are aware of the many greek gods you have heard about the greek mythology and there were so many gods in the greek mythology no more these gods are worshiped in a way that they were worshiped at that point of time but still they do find relevance in the many western movies and many characters are based on this in fact that those old age ancient movies like the troy and the uh, uh many other movies that you must have seen some kind of greek characters so greek area greece area is known for the greek mythology and some of the gods i will mention over here so greek god so let's look at the some of the greek gods i am mentioning over here and their features were very much present in the gandhara then so for example that greek god apollo there is a one very famous greek god apollo and zeus so when you look at the so i am writing here few things just give me a minute grace of the image grace of the image was inspired from inspired from greek god greek god apollo and zeus we will see the image later on but abhi dekh lo greek god apollo and zeus so grace of the image was inspired from greek god apollo and zeus so here that greek features are the grace of the face then i will show you the image later on abhi pehle likhne ka kaam kar lete another thing that you must have heard about the uh, greek gods like that hercules and atlas this you must have heard aajkal to cycle bhi aata hai hercules and atlas so aajkal ke bahut lambe time se the cycles are named after this hercules and atlas so when you see the images of the hercules and atlas they are the muscled bodies then so the muscular body of the image is inspired from the greek god hercules and atlas then so you write that muscular muscularity muscularity just one minute muscularity of image inspired from inspired from greek god hercules atlas hercules atlas hercules atlas Yeah. <laughs> 
mnemonics and Poseidon, they are all the Greek mythology figures, then right? So, Osiris, Osiris is Egyptian, not Greek. So, goddess of the light, Osiris. Understood this part? Understood? One last part in the, the Gandhara. Then, so one last part in the Gandhara. So, Bactrian. I have also used one of it, one of this cycle money. So I have used Atlas. Hercules name mila tha mereko. And uh, I think that you all, that one of the happiest moment of our life was that when we got the first bicycle for ourselves. And for me, I remember that day uh, that my father brought that, that my first cycle I'm sharing with you, BSA SLR Photon. Yes, that was the one cycle. So when it came and I came from school and then it was uh, kept at the backyards and then my sister said that go and something for you is kept at the backyard. So I was like that I was in the heaven when I got my first bicycle. So that feeling, I, I cannot compare it with that any other feeling. After that in life, I got so many things, so many gifts and so many things, but nothing compares to my first bicycle. So <laughs> you can relate with that. So <laughs> now, the Bactrian features. Bactrian. So in Bactrian features, so in Bactrian features, I'm writing some of the features. So Bactrian is basically Central Asian feature. Central Asia, which is the part of Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, these all area, Tajikistan, then. So these all area, so that's the Bactrian area. And Bactrian feature, basically that hair. In the beginning where we have written beards and mustaches, so that's the Bactrian feature. So beards and mustaches. Beards and mustaches, one. Then second, just one minute, long overcoats, long overcoats, long overcoats, beards and mustaches, long overcoats, hand. got wings <laughs> so and then the next one images had images had sword with scabbard sword with scabbard scabbard sword with scabbard and Hindi mein kya bolte ho? Talwar or talwar ki mayan. So this kind of thing you can see in the images which do have the Bactrian influence. Then, so images with sword and sword with scabbard. Talwar or talwar ki mayan. So this is all about the features of this particular, uh, features of this particular Gandhara sculpture. Now, Mathura may special features we will see and then at last we'll be writing one similarity between them. So I hope you have written this part. I'm moving upwards. So special features of Mathura, as you have seen, so uh, okay. Hi, Richa. Uh, actually, what they have done right now, earlier the camera was not fixed, but now what they have done that they have fixed the camera in the classroom. And basically the classroom where that from where I'm taking the classes, it's close to my home. So uh, here in this classroom, your classes will not happen. Your classes will happen uh, 
दैट इफ यू हैव एनी क्लास ऑफ सोसाइटी और पॉलिटी वो तुम्हारी क्लासरूम होगी ठीक है सो नॉट दिस वन सो सोसाइटी एंड पॉलिटी एंड आई थिंक दैट देयर दे कैन मूव द कैमराज देयर द कैमराज आर नॉट फिक्स बट इन माई इन दिस क्लास रूम वेयर आई एम द कैमराज आर फिक्सड सो वी कैन नॉट काइंड ऑफ दैट मूव इट सो नाउ माथुरा स्कल्चर वॉट आर द स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स ऑफ दिस वन दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर स्पेसिफिक फीचर इज द थ्री रिलीजन्स डन सो थ्री रिलीजन्स लेट्स डिस्कस वन बाई वन so in buddhism the images were images in the buddhism were like the one which we have mentioned in the beginning then but we need to see that whose image in hinduism was created in the mathura and whose image was created in the jainism so let's first talk about that jainism so jainism so isme likhna that images of images of tirthankars tirthankars and particularly particularly vardhaman mahavir particularly vardhaman mahavir was created particularly vardhaman mahavir was created then then hinduism ise me likho in mathura so in hinduism whose image was created hinduism in hinduism they created the sculptures of the or images of the uh, shiva and then vishnu so you write images of lord shiva and lord vishnu and lord vishnu was created but there is more to it not only that their images but in what form so first i will mention about the lord shiva's image so lord shiva's image was created in the form of mukha linga or shiva linga then so two type of the image of the lord shiva was created not the full image of the lord shiva but mukha linga or shiva linga i'll show you the image that what is the mukha linga and shiva linga you i hope that you know so ek image abhi dikhaunga but pehle likh lo so <coughs> lord shiva lord shiva was presented was presented in the form of in the form of mukha linga mukha linga and shiva linga mukha linga and shiva linga then so lord shiva was presented in the form of mukha linga and shiva linga then and then next one lord vishnu so lord vishnu lord vishnu was often represented was often represented with his ayud was often represented with his ayud arms then so lord vishnu was often represented with his ayud with his ayud then often represented with his ayud so this is what is specific feature in the mathura theek okay? hai specific feature in the mathura ek last for the today's class that is the one similarity between the mathura and gandhara both did had the halos in the back of that halos they created halos uh, on the back side of the head of the deities then so back side of the head of the deities and what is this halo halo is basically one such illuminated thing whenever you see image of a god so one such illuminated circle is created that is what they called halo so dono mein likhna in both the places both the places you will be writing that halo 
was created hello in gandhara you write hello was created close to head close to head and then here also hello was created so this is a similarity hello was created close to head so let me show you these all things in the images please write quickly i'll show you these all in the image Hi Archana, Buddhist images. Already the features in the beginning that you have written, that's all about. Buddhist image में बस चाहो तो इतना लिख सकते हो कि Buddha and Bodhisattva's image were created. No requirement of writing that one because it's more about that these all sculptures that we are writing more about the Buddhist images. Then, so whenever we are writing those features, if you remember, delighted image of Buddha was created. That is the Buddhist. Then. so that is what you have written in the beginning and all the features already you have written we just mentioned that some specific ones some different ones over here then so now i hope you have written now is the image time are ye to chala gaya let me connect it so please see this image then as you can see that uh, that it's a gray sandstone you can see and then moreover this is the part which we call hallow and you, if you look at the face of this person that this buddha's image face is very graceful it is very graceful and this grace what we say that this grace of the face is inspired from the greek god apollo there would be further images so here also you can see that the grace of the face it is inspired from the greek god apollo and you see that that the cloth which is there it's a simple cloth which is he is wearing then so these all are the images of the gandha uh, that greek uh, that gandhara and uh, here you see that this is how the face of the greek god apollo is there curly hair as you can see curly hair all the places then then next image greek influence i have specifically brought the image of the uh, this greek god apollo and then here as you can compare both the images so ye maine apne haath se likha hai so this images would be uploaded on your platform then the bactrian sculpture bactrian bactrian style gandhara mein so bactrian mein dekho that you can see that mustaches are there then and they are a uh, little bit of that hair he must be carrying some kind of uh, weapon also so generally in the bactrian style of the bandhara they did had weapons and then mustaches kuch kuch images mein dadi bhi hai theek hai so that is there then it's a image of the maitreya we will talk about him there was a question on the maitreya in uh, 2017 prelims then fasting buddha so i said to you that spiritual people they are going into the starvation also that they are not concerned about eating so much so there is a one image you can see that his bones are visible then and here you can see that there is a beard mustache obviously that he is fasting he is not concerned about he is not concerned about his body so obviously that these all features will appear in his body then then so the roman feature here i have brought this one large ear lobe as you can see and also the half closed eyes you can see that this half closed eyes ye images se bhi zyada jaldi yaad hoga tumhe ki kya humne padha hai then uh, roman realism this is what you haven't written but likh lena that exactly closer to the roman romans believed in the reality and realism was the one such feature in the gandhara so roman realism then Uh, bactrian influence again i said to you that bactrian influence so you can see in the bactrian influence dadi bhi hogi mooch bhi hoga theek hai so this kind of thing would be there bactrian influence here it is also bactrian influence and 
in this image you can see that he is carrying a weapon. So in Bactrian influence, they always carried a weapon. So kabhi agar jo talwar hogi, to mayan bhi hogi. That there would be a sword and scabbard. So let's come to the Mathura. So Mathura sculpture. As you can see that red sandstone. Then So red sandstone and uh, red sandstone. This is the color purpose. Then next image. So you can see the body also that here some kind of that not very abs are visible but it is a round kind of body. You can see that round body and as compared to the Gandhara the images were not very tall. Then so images were not very tall in Gandhara images were tall but in Mathura images were not very tall. I'm not saying that they were small, but they were not very tall. Again, you see that body part that there are fats visible in the body. They are not very muscled then, though the body looks good, but they are not very muscled. And then this design part I will mention later on, then that halo may design bhi hota tha. So that I'll mention later on. Then uh, this is what we see in the Mathura. Okay? Ki jab mention kiya that Lord Shiva was represented in the form of the Mukhalinga. This is what is Mukhalinga. Then what is Linga? I hope you all know that Linga is the sexual organ of the male. Then and here Shiva is the greatest representative of that. So his sexual organ that is phallus is worshipped. And on that phallus an image is created of the Shiva. So this is what is the Mukhalinga. Then it's a rare image you will not find generally in the books. Then. So Mathura Seva, which is Mukhalinga. And then Sivalinga, oh, I hope you already know, I have not brought the image of the Sivalinga because you all have, you must have seen the Sivalinga and then it must have been there in your homes. Then Mathura Vishnu with Ayud. So you see that Mathura Vishnu with his Ayud, what is his Ayud arms? This is the chakra of the, that, uh, what do you say that? Sudarshan chakra of the Vishnu. And this is one mace of the Vishnu. So these are the arms of the Vishnu. So this is what is the Mathura Vishnu. Okay? Then Mathura Mahavir. So uh, generally that in Jainism that they remained naked. So naked images of the Mahavir was created. So in the same tradition you can see that naked image of the Mahavir is created in the Mathura style. Then so Mathura style. So Amravati since I have not embarked on the journey of the Amravati we will do it in the next class. Okay? So I hope this class was helpful to you and uh, you have understood the things but please pay heed to my request it's a request only that please revise it today all the things revise it today and i didn't ask for your questions today though i i take up some questions from the screen itself but otherwise i will give you enough time to ask those questions okay so with this note thank you meet you next time and uh, i think rb6 we do we are meeting for two we, we are meeting tomorrow for the remaining of the <laughs> portions of uh, modern Indian history. Kal baki khatam karenge. Theke? Chalo. Thank you and good night to all of you.